I've been told that in order to get rid of my anxiety, I have to find the root cause and deal with that. Can you help me find the root cause of my issue? Well, this is a common story when people get in touch to find out if I can help them beat anxiety. That, but will you be finding the root cause question. So today I want to share the truth about finding the root cause of anxiety. And I'm going to suggest to you something that may fly in the face of everything you believe. There isn't a root cause and the hunting for one may just be causing you more problems. Oh, and I'll also reveal by the end of this video the root cause of your anxiety issues. Confused? Bear with me. Okay, but first let me explain what on earth I mean by root cause. People are often led to believe that beneath whatever psychological issue they may have, there is some underlying cause, a trigger event that caused the issue often a protective mechanism to help them avoid something similar to that trigger event happening again. Some therapists don't call it a root cause, they call it a trigger event or an ISE, an initiating significant event. But I want to challenge this, so let's take a real example. Oh, by the way, quick aside, my name's Howard Cooper and if you haven't seen me before, I'm all about sharing new ways of thinking to help you beat anxiety. I'm an ex-anxiety sufferer myself who's now spent over 20 plus years specialising in helping people overcome patterns of anxiety. One-on-one -on -one sessions, online workshops, training other therapists too. If you struggle with anxiety and wish people would just give you some solutions without just spewing the just think positive platitudes at you, then subscribe to the channel, it's really likely to help. Okay, where were we? Ah yes, I was going to give you an example of that root cause nonsense. Take the case of Jack who comes to see me at the age of 35, terrible fear of flying, when he was young, he'd get on airplanes, he'd fly regularly without thought, and with total ease. But then at the age of 16, he experienced severe turbulence on a flight and, from then on, becomes terrified of flying and won't even drive near an airport, let alone go on a plane without freaking out. Now, surely it doesn't get clearer. There is an obvious root cause for poor Jack, this turbulent flight he went on, right? Well, not so fast. And here's why. Did every single other person on that same turbulent flight all go away with that same debilitating fear of flying as Jack? I would argue that's doubtful. Chances are there were some people who got off the flight who laughed and went, that was a bit bumpy, wasn't it, love? And didn't think any more about it. So then the question is, what had happened that had made it so that Jack was affected so profoundly, with his brain responding to severe turbulence in that it's now a threat response? Or well, perhaps it was the fact that prior to the flight, he'd noticed some anxious people in the airport and that had primed his brain. Or perhaps it was the fact he'd been told about a friend's experience of turbulence six months earlier that hadn't sounded pleasant and that had primed his brain. Or perhaps when he was a child he was locked in the closet for two minutes whilst playing hide and seek and the, the feeling of being trapped was logged as a threat. But then, even if that was the case, why was the feeling of being trapped in a closet when there was no real danger? Why was that logged as a threat? Perhaps they'd heard their mum screaming, don't lock the door when Jack had gone to the toilet as a toddler. Or maybe it was something else, or... Can you see how even in the case of obvious root cause like this, the more you examine it, the more you begin to realise that finding one exact trigger or event to explain your nuanced response and problem pattern of thinking, it becomes increasingly like trying to find the grain of sand that caused the sandcastle. It becomes impossible. So why is this important to see, and why am I making this video? Especially as some people will, I guarantee in the comments, say something like, Well, I got to the root cause of my anxiety. It was XYZ, and that really helped me. Well, here's the thing. If you buy into the story and metaphor that a specific past event caused a problem, and that by releasing your anxiety around it or recoding that trigger was helpful, great. It is entirely possible that working with a constructed metaphor around a root cause can provide useful therapeutic healing. In which case, carry on watching this video out of interest and know that I'm genuinely pleased for you that embracing that root cause story has been of value to you. However, if we don't realise that this root cause frame is just one of many potentially useful healing metaphors and we buy into it as though it's an absolute truth, there has to be a root cause, then what do the people do who can't find it? They go to a therapist who's going to help them find the root cause and as they look for that grain of sand, none of it fits quite right and they become disillusioned and stuck with feeling of I can't get better until I find this thing. Which if there isn't a single root cause, becomes a pretty big problem. I can only get better when I find the single event in my past that doesn't exist and can't be found. 
good luck with that. And whilst I'm likely going to make a future video about dealing with the past, let me gloss over the depth of this monumentally large topic for a moment and say this. The reality is, you're only living in the present. In the now. And that if you were having a response to a past event, that is an illusion of thinking. Your response is not coming from the past, but it's a response to a thought in your head right now that you've labelled, this happened. But this thought is one you're having right now. And your thoughts right now are not the past itself. Which means even if you found the root cause, you wouldn't really be dealing with it at all. You could only deal with your thinking about it in the net. So if you've told yourself I need to find the root cause of my issue to get better, maybe you don't at all. Maybe you can't. Maybe there isn't a root cause. Maybe it's better to focus on how can I change the relationship with my thinking in this moment. And by the way, if this resonates with you, I do see clients one-on-one -on -one and help people overcome anxiety without having to delve into the whole root cause story. So if you do want to help, feel free to head over to my website and send me a message. But you know what? Despite all of this, I know there'll still be people who say, but surely there really must be a root cause. And I did promise at the beginning of this video in a moment of paradoxical playfulness to give you one. So brace yourself, because here goes. The root cause of your issues is... You are human, and everything that's ever happened, starting with the evolution of millions of years, shaping the way human brains are wired up, combined with historically everything that's ever happened, combined with geographical and cultural influences that have shaped the generations leading up to your birth, along with all the experiences that have ever happened to you during your entire life, have culminated in your brain being exactly like it is for you at this moment in time and space. There you go. That's the root cause done. Now you can move on. As always, if you like this video, give us a like, leave your comments below and share this video with others you might think could benefit from challenging these thoughts a little.